Now, you know, when you interview some of your favorite stars, particularly from the era that you remember bought records the most, you know, the sort of thing, whether it was at a jukebox leaning against your radiogram, don't you pretend you don't know what a radiogram is? Yes, you all remember that. Remember record players that drop down records so you could put 10 at a time and buy a record six, they're all revving around, you have to come, yes, move the arm. Do you remember all of that? Now, what's interesting is a lot of our stars of yesteryear have really jumped on, many people might suggest, the memorabilia bandwagon, you know, re-releasing albums uh, back in vinyl in pink colored versions, uh, double booklets with lyrics and content and story. You know, the sort of thing. One of the biggest stars over here, what had a huge hit across the world, was ABC in the very early part of the 1980s. Their album, Lexicon of Love, had so many hits. Poison Arrow and The Look of Love, just to name two. Interesting that the uh, singer, Martin Fry, originally a good Yorkshire boy from Sheffield, said, you know, when they were sort of starting out, their main rivals were the likes of Duran Duran and Spandau Ballet. But they were told by um, you know their label that really they shouldn't like them or admit to liking them in interviews and it got me thinking really and I wanted to share this with our community the chums of us you know were you in sort of rival record things in a sense because every era sort of has one doesn't it I think in the 60s you might say of course that it could be the Rolling Stones versus the Beatles or was it Tom Jones versus Engelbert Humperdinck maybe you preferred Tony Christie then in the 80s do you remember these two pop divas? Yes, Debbie Gibson and Tiffany. They were huge rivals, the mole girls as they called them, because they toured shopping malls performing to the audiences who then went out and bought their records. You queued up on a Monday, didn't you? Or when you got your sort of money, you know, your shopping money to go and buy your, I know the bells, they're coming for me. <laughs> Not surprised after doing this show, are you? But what's interesting, seriously, is what was the record uh, that you maybe had a friend with that you were rivals over? Were you, say, dance band people? Was it Tommy Dorsey versus X? Frank Sinatra, Perry Como? You name it. Elvis was seen as the king of rock and roll, and it's without a doubt, but there's many uh, sort of kings of rock and roll since then. He was the ultimate, the biggest star, of course, the starter. But over here, we had the likes of Tommy Steele, Billy Fury. So I throw it out to you just as a bit of fun, what did you buy and did you have friends who were rivals with? Did they like another pop band that you particularly didn't? Did you all sort of buy posters, put them on your walls? Did you paper your exercise books with their pictures? Or were you in a fan club? And who's fan club? I'd love to know. Because now when you look at the back of these old records in charity shops, you do wonder, you know what I'm like, what if anybody's still there at that PO box number waiting? for the fan base to come through and say, yes, we are still a fan of Adam and the Ants. Either way, let me know in the comments below. Yes, being the Yorkshireman, there's no prize. Neil Sean in the very heart of Yorkshire.